So the first thing that I want to bring to your attention this morning is wait and wait on the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, wait and wait on the Lord. I was reading the book of Psalms the other day, and there's a powerful scripture that says, wait on the Lord. And again I say, wait on the Lord. Because if you look through this life of Jesus, Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus came down to die for us. Yet, if you study the life of Jesus, you will see something that Jesus is a perfect example of knowing the time of God. Now, this is so important that I teach you this this morning because this is going to help you understand life in a very beautiful way. You will see that Jesus was not in a rush. And I, I love this part where you will see Jesus after he was born. Two years, they had to hide baby Jesus. Now, think about it for a minute. He's the son of the living God, but he was also fully man. So when Jesus lived on the earth, he lived by the principles that we all can follow. That means that if you want to have a successful life, you just need to study the life of Jesus and you will understand how to follow through that same success because even though Jesus was fully God, he was still fully man, giving himself to all the principles that are common and universal to all people that are living on the planet earth. That means that if you study the life of Jesus, you can find secrets, you can find keys that will give us the strength to have a victorious Christian life while we live on this planet earth. Look at that. Two years, Jesus remained hidden. This is something that, that it is very hard for us to comprehend because we just want to arrive. We just want to get to that place of destiny. Can we just get under the limelight? Can we just get to the part where we are successful? But that is not what Jesus did. For two years, there was a season where he had to remain hidden and not engage in conflict. It wasn't because he was afraid of the enemies. It wasn't because he couldn't call the angels and beat up those guys that were against him. There was times when he had to stay hidden and not engage in conflict, but just stay hidden under the mighty hands of God. Are we learning something already this morning? And then if you look at the life of Jesus, you will continue to see for 30 long years, Jesus did no ministry. And that to me is amazing because, hey, he is the son of God, all powerful God. He has all, he can snap his fingers and do things. But he waited for 30 years until he began to move in the unction and the power of the Holy Spirit. If there's one thing that makes Christians uncomfortable in the Bible, is the part where God leads us to say, wait, wait. Because we don't want to wait. Why can't we just do it overnight? Because when we wait, what we don't realize is that God is moving things into position, even without our eyes see them. God is moving things around you, aligning things. You don't want to get to the place of destiny even before God has set up your place. There are people that need to come by your side. There are elements that need to be there in order for you to go to the next level. Even before that is prepared, you cannot overstep your boundaries. You cannot overstep your destiny. One of the biggest things that you can do as a child of God is to say, God, I'd like this thing to happen today, yet not my will, but yours be done. <laughs> I'd like success overnight, but not my will, but yours be done. God, I'd like to just get married tomorrow, but not my will, but yours be done. Hey, how many of you are understanding what I'm saying? Because you never know. God is preparing your husband somewhere on this planet. You don't want to get too impatient and rush with it. And then you get married and then say, oh my, what was I thinking? <laughs> Because God has a way of preparing things for you even though you don't see it. Look at the life of Moses. 
Moses was, was the figure in the Old Testament that represented Jesus in the New Testament. If you see his life, in fact, he was very, very powerfully used by God to bring hundreds of thousands of people out from their slavery into their destiny. But this guy's destiny did not even start until the age of 80. You think that it's time for him to resign and, you know, go on a vacation or something. But when it was 80, God said, time to use you to create history. Bible is full of such examples. If you look at the life of Abraham, when he was 75 years old, God promised him that he will have a son of his own. 75 years old, um, he, he moved to 85 and Papa got a little impatient and he said, you know, uh, you know let's just help God, you know. <laughs> some people, we don't want to wait for God, we just want to help God and some of the biggest mess in history happened because of Abraham's impatience. If you didn't understand, it's a good thing we move on to the next point. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm saying? I have some new people standing up and like, please tell us what the joke is because he went and Sorry, I hope kids are not around. He went and I see kids. I, can, I cannot say. He, he, he tried to help God with his servant in the house. So let's just leave it at that. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Because he said, hey, God said something. He's not following through. My wife is not giving birth. Let me just find out if it's still working with my servant. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to help God. Some of you are so religious, you're like, you don't know how to smile, huh? I shall not smile this morning. Come on, God is not going to be upset if you smile. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay to smile in the church. Come on, come on, please. <laughs> you know how old he was when Abraham finally got his promised son? He was 100 years old. How old was Sarah? Sarah was 90 years old. Think about that. Just when mama says that I'm all done, God says, no, I'm just starting. <laughs> That's the beauty of coming into the church. And I, when, I, when you come to church and I preach the word of God, it doesn't matter how dead your womb looks like. It doesn't matter how dead your situation looks like. The word of God is so powerful that Sunday after Sunday, when we preach the word Listen, you can't pick and choose whom you sow the Word of God to. That is why when you come in, the Word of God is like seeds. You just take the seeds and you just throw it out. You never know which one is going to bear fruit. You never know which one is going to germinate first. You're looking at that 90-year-old grandma and saying, she's ready to go home. And when God is saying, no, she's just getting started. How many of you understand what I'm saying? The devil is looking at some of you and saying, you are done. The devil is looking at some of you and saying, you are finished. But tell the devil this morning he is risen and I am just getting started somebody shout he is risen I don't care how, how discouraged you are this morning. I don't care how, how depressed you are this morning. As I speak, speak the words of Jesus, these words of Jesus shall become power inside you. And everything that the enemy has been planning to kill you, to destroy you, to slow you down, shall be arrested by the power of the name of Jesus. I want to say, defy the odds of the, the, the desire to the need to correct everything in your life. Defy that desire, that temptation to fix everything overnight. Look at your neighbor and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't need to see everything happen overnight. Just wait a minute. You're going through trouble, but just wait a minute. You're going through disaster, but just wait a minute. The bank has bad news for you, but just God wants to say, just wait a minute. 
Hey, you don't see things happening, but there is something that is happening inside you. Mama Sarah, you don't see anything happening, but there's something inside you that is smaller than a small beans that is growing inside you. You don't see it, but God, the hand of God is still working today in 2016 in Montreal. God's not dead. He is alive. Just wait a minute. Look at your neighbor and say, he's preaching to you. Come on, tell them that. Just wait a minute. Look at your other neighbor and say, just wait a minute. Before you throw in the towel, just wait a minute. Before you sign that divorce paper, just wait a minute. Before you sell that car, just wait a minute. Before you take the matters in your hand, just wait a minute. Because the Jesus that raised over the dead lives inside you. Who am I preaching to this morning? God's not done. Church, do you hear the voice of God this morning? I can't hear you. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, God's not dead. You better not be dead this morning. I want to hear your voice like never before. Did anybody come here to have some real church this morning? It is time for us to stop playing church and have an experience of the real church. Come on. Listen. Listen. This is not a time for you to quit. Because this is a time for you to see the glory of God. You know why? Because if you will wait longer, you will see, that, oh, I love this verse. Jesus went up to the cross, the Bible says, for the joy that was kept before him. He was going to be nailed on his feet, on his hands, crowns on his head, a crown of thorns on his head. His, his back was going to be torn apart with whips with nails on it. Yet, the Bible says, for the joy that was kept before him. You know what the joy was? The Bible says, when Jesus went through what he was supposed to go through, the Bible says, he put all things under his feet. Ooh, Jesus had authority over everything because he went through the process. Don't skip the process. I know you don't like it. I know it's not comfortable. I don't like the fact that I feel like I'm down, but God says stick with the process. Go through the cross. Go through the dying. Go through that bleeding. I know your heart bleeds like, like nobody else can understand. But I show you this morning that if nobody understands you, even if your best friend doesn't understand you, even if your mother doesn't understand you, there is one man who died for you on the cross that bled a thousand times. He understands you 100%. Wait on him. And the Bible says he put everything under his feet. <laughs> that means I'm going to. The devil wants you to sulk. The devil wants you to cry. The devil wants you to discourage. He wants you to go into depression. He wants you to lock yourself in the bedroom and not see anybody else. He just wants you to just get out of the sunlight. And he just wants you to isolate yourself. But tell the devil I'm coming out because I know that if I can just go through this cross... If I can go through this valley, talk to me somebody. If I can go through this process, if I can go through this darkness, I am coming out and the Lord shall put my enemies under my feet. Hey. That is why in the Bible, you don't praise God after you get the blessing. You praise God before you get the blessing. 
Because you, you got to learn to move your feet in the church. Some of you are just waiting for club lights and to walk into some pub in Montreal to dance. But the best place to dance is in the house of God. Because when you learn to worship Him, He lifts your legs high enough because God is going to put everything that is fighting you, He's going to put, you under, put it under your feet and He will establish your ways. Wait on the Lord. It's not comfortable, but wait on the Lord. It's uneasy, but wait on the Lord. A sleepless night, but wait on the Lord. And again, I say, wait on the Lord. Is anybody hearing what God is saying this morning? Wait on the Lord. This is why you brought me to church this morning, Lord. I thought he, you're going to take me to church and you're going to say that, you know, breakthrough is coming or, or, that, or that my visa is coming or that my promotion is coming or that, or that the, the, the handsome guy that I was waiting on for all this while, he's going to say, he finally come and ask me out. And, and, and this, this pastor guy is just saying, wait. God wants to bless you. But he's going to do through it. Not when everything is at peace. He wants to bless you through a hostile environment. Everything looks crazy and he's going to bless you. Oh, how many of you understand Psalms 23? If you've read your Bible, you'll see, oh, the Lord has a way of preparing a table before your enemies. He's not waiting for your enemies to go so he can prepare a table. He's waiting for the enemies to come so he can prepare a table before the enemies. You are going to have your enemies surround you and you're going to have a chicken and you're going to <laughs> You can't touch me because I know who is on my side. Hey. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Don't wait for your problems to finish. You are going to see the glory of God in your problems. How many of you understand what I said? You're waiting for the problems to finish to go to church. No, 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 brother. No, no, no. You go to God now. You go to God because now is the hour. You don't wait for things to get right to go to God. You don't wait till you're 60 to go to God because you have no idea. You may not be even alive then. You need to seek God when you're able to. You need to give God your best, not your worst. You need to give God the best of your youth. I was talking to a young man who was working for the Microsoft and I was telling you, I said, your best of your youth is going to companies that don't really care for you. They're just going to use and whoever, Bill Gates or whatever, he's going to get richer and richer. Why don't you give your best to Jesus? Jesus is the only one who can take little or nothing and use you to be a generation changer. Enough of depending on everybody else around you. It is time for you to be a history maker. You know that little boy that went to Jesus? That little kid with five loaves? He didn't have too much. He just had five loaves of bread and two fish. God used that little to feed a generation. To feed a nation. Because no matter how little you have, when you come to Jesus, He has a way of taking nothing and making everything out of it. This morning, it is time for you to try Jesus. This morning, it is time for you to stop living that lie of the enemy. It is time for you to stop listening to the deception of this culture. I'm sorry that religion disappointed you. I'm sorry that many people that you looked up to in church disappointed you. I'm sorry that, that there's too much religion that has caused a bad name to Jesus. But I want you to know, irrespective of who has failed you, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his ways are perfect. His ways are perfect. How dare you allow broken men to stop you from a perfect God? How dare you allow religious folks to disappoint you to out of the church? Let the religious folks get out. We need the sinners back in the church. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Church was not made for cute Christians. Church was made for broken people. Church was not made for perfect people. If you're perfect, please don't come to our church. 
Because Jesus didn't die for perfect people. He died for sinners. This morning, take every mess in your life and say, Lord, I'm turning my life around. Because I know one thing. There's only one man who can do that. The Son of God. And his name is Jesus. Somebody clap hands for Jesus this morning.